Hello, and thank you so much for listening. We are going to continue with the book of Ruth, chapter 4, Ruth and Boaz are married. I'm reading out of the Life Application Bible. It is a study Bible printed by Tyndale. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there. When the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along, Boaz said, Come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town and said, Sit here. And they did so. Then he said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me so I will know, for no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. Now let us get some understanding as to what is going on. According to the study Bible, it says Boaz knew he could find his relative at the town gate. This was a center of activity. No one could enter or leave the town without traveling through the gate. Merchants set up their temporary shops near the gate, which also served as city hall. Here, city officials gathered to do what? Transact business. Because there was so much activity, it was a good place to find witnesses. And an appropriate place for Boaz to make his transaction. So you see, there's not this love affair that's taking place. No, this is about business. And some of you all need to catch hold of this message because you are going into these relationships. And you're going into them with your heart wide open. The Lord tells us we're supposed to protect our heart. You see, many marriages back then and even now are business arrangements. You see, some of us, we get connected to people for various reasons. And it's not always about love and romance and, you know, these types of things that some of us believe is, you know, what, you know, is, is the building blocks of a relationship. Okay. Oh, yes. I mean, we we know these things to be true, but we have to recognize that not everybody is entering into a relationship, you know, like that, where there's dating and courtships and so forth. Some people have a business arrangement, a transaction, if you will. Boaz knows that there is responsibility ahead in taking Ruth as his wife. So there's a lot more going on in this man's mind other than what he can get from her behind closed doors. Come on now. Some of you all, you are getting involved in these relationships and you know there is more to it than just to do it. Hallelujah. And thank you, Lord Jesus. So we read on. I will redeem it, he said. He's accepting. He is receiving. Okay, in verse 5, then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth, the Moabitess, you acquire the dead man's widow in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Okay, verse 6, at this the kinsman redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it. Okay, so here it was okay to redeem it until Lord Jesus, I've got an increase of responsibility. This kinsman redeemer. Oh, no, 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 no. I cannot accept. Okay. So he backpedaled. He decided that this was not what he wanted to do. He changed his mind. You see, some people may have been meant to be in your life, but then they changed their mind or you changed your mind. Once you thought about, oh Lord, I got to take on children. If I marry this person, I've got to take on a bunch of drama. If I get involved with this person, I might have to care for their elderly parent, Lord Jesus. And you see this man, he didn't beat around the bush. He didn't play mind games. He didn't see what he could get. He didn't say, okay, later on down the line, I'm just going to divorce or get out of it once I get what I get. No, he said from the uh, beginning, after he realized what it entailed, no, uh -uh, I cannot redeem it. At this, the kinsman redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Okay. 
Now in verse 7, it says, Now in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. You see, some of you all, you don't have a paper between you all, but you want to be recognized. You want to be recognized as being in a partnership. The Lord doesn't see it that way. I can tell you that he's not talking about marriage for nothing in the scriptures. Okay. God is not using men to talk about relationships and so forth for nothing. There is a business in being with someone. And it affects you not only spiritually, not only mentally, but physically as well. And it affects those around you, particularly when you get involved with government types of transactions. And that is what this particular situation was. And when you sign a document uh, that the government puts out, then guess what? You are getting yourself into not only uh, a romance, if you will, but a legalized transaction. Okay. Some of you all, you need to recognize the fact that people who get married, they got to go through some things in order to get those perks, those benefits and so forth. Okay. Some people, they want the perks and the benefits, but they don't want to take on nobody's name. Okay. And the Lord says, no, that's not what he honors. Okay, he does not honor. Some of you all go to him and you pray for your partner as if he or she is your husband or wife. And the Lord says he does not hear those prayers. I know some of you all say, oh, well, he evidently he did do something for me. No, that was somebody else. That was an intercessor who stood in a gap for you. Okay, and declared mercy upon your sinful relationship. Okay. I'm a witness to this. How can I speak like this? Because been there, done it, and seen the movie quite a few times in my life. So the kinsman redeemer in verse 8 said to Boaz, buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people today, you are witnesses that I've brought, that I've bought from Naomi, all the property of Elimelech, Killian, and Malin. I've also acquired Ruth the Moabitess, Malin's widow, as my wife in order to, what? Maintain the name of the dead with his property. Does that sound romantic? Does that sound sweet and nice? Okay. No, he is doing this to maintain the name of the dead with his property so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town records. Now, we know that Boaz is fond of her and we got that feeling and we even, you know, picked up on some things in previous chapters. But the, but the reality of this relationship, the seriousness of this relationship wasn't about a man being fond of a woman. But there was business associated with this woman. And he wanted to be a part of it. He was accepting of it. Okay. So we have him maintaining the name of the dead with his property so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town records. Today, you are witnesses. OK, this is why even now we've got witnesses when we get married, people that stand around and say, oh, yes, I was there. I know that the two of these people are married. OK, so in case there was any doubt or in case somebody said, mm, that sounds like a sham or what have you. Well, there were witnesses. In verse 11, then the elders and all those at the gate said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up, or Leah, I should say, who together built up the house of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrathah. And be famous in Bethlehem through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman. May your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Okay, wouldn't you like that, some of you all? Everyone blessing you around your union. People who actually are wishing you well. But we know that's not always the case. And sometimes what happens is God sets it up so that there is no one but strangers who are witnesses. Okay. These weren't family members that were saying, may you have standing and blessing these people. These were strangers. 
And there's nothing wrong with having strangers blessing your union. Okay, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Okay, took Ruth. It's a very nice way of saying what? He slept with her. He had sex with her. Okay? So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Some people, they will say, well, you see, there wasn't any like formal marriage ceremony and there wasn't this and that. No, but there still was a business transaction. Okay, not in the way that we see it nowadays, but there was still something that took place, a legalized transaction between two people. And we cannot justify things and say, well, you know. God, he just blessed me with a spiritual union. No, you need to sign some papers to that union. Okay? Then he went to her. And the Lord enabled her to conceive. That's another nice way of saying that uh, they made a baby, right? And she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. Lord Jesus, and we could get spiritual with this one, can't we? A kinsman redeemer, somebody who's going to take over, somebody that's going to help us out spiritually, mentally, physically. Oh, Lord Jesus, you need to ask, who is your kinsman redeemer? We're not talking about just a man or a woman. No, we're talking about the one true God. Is he your kinsman redeemer? Reading on, may he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. Come on now, a, a child, there's more to a child being born than just uh, taking up some air or, you know, putting a smile on your face or uh, showing them around to friends and family. Oh, no, no, no. As you get older, you're going to have a reason to live when you have those children around you. When things get rough, times get rough, you got those children around you that will encourage you, whether they are yours or adopted or someone else's reading on for your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth my lord jesus in verse 16 then naomi took the child laid him in her lap and cared for him that's a grandmother for you that's a grandmother that loves her grandchild the women living there said naomi has a son and they named him obed see you may not have your blood sons, Lord Jesus, you may not have your blood daughters, but God can raise up a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law uh, along with your own children, Lord Jesus, and create someone else, someone else who may come back and find you for some of you all who are without your children. Uh, that's someone else, a grandchild. Lord Jesus, or a great grandchild. Oh, God can set it up. Oh, we may not always, you know, see how God is moving, but he can move in such a way where you think, oh, the blessing's coming from my own flesh and blood. And it could be that it's coming from the adopted son or it's coming from, you know, the, the man, uh, the man's child whom you married or the woman's child you know, whom you married. Oh, I mean, you don't have to have your own children to be able to experience love and care and a second chance or a first chance at being a parent or grandparent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus. There is somebody out there who is just grieved because you don't have the type of relationship with your blood relatives but that's okay though because god can send you a kinsman redeemer someone that can just take over and help you out someone who can love on you someone who can give you the care and the peace of mind that you have always wanted but you couldn't get with your own family lord jesus you need a Boaz in your life. And if you just continue to trust in the Lord, whoever it is that's going through, I will tell you that God will send the Boaz to you. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to dress down to the point where you people can see your private parts. You don't have to act a certain kind of way. 
where people could mistake you as being a street walker for some of you young ladies who dress the way you do. I pray in Jesus name that you will recognize that there are men out here that are turned off by women who walk out in the public dressed in attire that is not decent, that is not respectable. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's take this time out to pray. Pray for those individuals who, like I said earlier, they're looking for someone or something to happen. They want a person or a, even a group to come in and help them out to be able to give them some things that others couldn't give them. And I'm praying, Lord Jesus, that you will just send these people or person to whoever it is that needs that type of interaction, needs that type of partnership, Lord Jesus. I ask that you will just send wise people, loving people, creative people, sweet people, nice people, Lord Jesus, around this individual, Lord. Well, that is it. That completes the series on Ruth. I do hope that you will listen to the other audios if you haven't. This is very much a Bible study of blessing. And I thank you as always for listening and to God be the glory.